The next morning, as Silfer's mood had improved, everyone prepared to visit the estate of the noble family, El still harbored some concerns, hoping that today would go smoothly. He took a deep breath and glanced out at the bustling capital city through the hotel window, already formulating plans for the worst-case scenarios in his mind. As the sun reached its zenith, El's family arrived at the gates of the Einhardt family estate, a magnificent courtyard with an impressive building loomed before them, leaving Serena in awe, wow, it's so big, she exclaimed. Kana, typically reserved, also felt compelled to comment, indeed, the most prestigious noble family is truly different, it's as large as the walls in Banzark, Serena nodded in agreement, saying, yes, absolutely amazing. In contrast to the excitement of the two girls, Silfer felt burdened and heavy-hearted, she sighed softly, her demeanor unchanged. After struggling with that heavy feeling for a while, Silfer tried to regain her spirits by taking a deep breath. Silfer gazed determinately at the estate and strode forward without hesitation. As she approached, the gate guards immediately questioned them, Is this the Einhardt noble family estate, why are you here? Silfer replied promptly, I'm here to see the Count, the guard scrutinized her suspiciously and asked, Do you have an appointment, if not, you can't see him. Silfer boldly declares to the sentry, so tell Lord Einhardt that after seventeen years, Silfer has returned. The sentry, facing Silfer's imposing demeanor, immediately startled, stammered, Young, young Mr. Silfer, my apologies, I will inform him right away. Shortly after, the three-legged, four-legged sentry dashed into the mansion to deliver the message. Silfer felt a bit anxious as she waited outside the mansion, she pondered over the rumors that had spread, after her betrothal was annulled, the power of the Einhardt earldom had noticeably declined. After her expulsion, her father had fallen into such deep despair that he had fasted for an entire month, the decision to exile Rian was the prince's decree, leaving her father with no other choice, it wasn't that he didn't want to act differently. Suddenly, the fierce, angry visage of an yard from years past flashed in Silfer's mind, after he had killed Rian, he had said, be thankful, reflecting on that moment, Silfer couldn't help but feel perplexed, why had he spoken those words? Seeing Silfer looking troubled and lost in thought, L stepped forward and gently placed a hand on her shoulder to comfort her. Startled, Silfer turned to see her son's gentle smile and soothing gaze, in an instant, she seemed to regain her composure. Silfer responded to El's gesture with a serene and trusting smile, instantly feeling reassured. At that moment, Anyart and Gletton emerged with expressions of both surprise and concern, Anyart's voice trembled as he called out to his daughter, Silfer, Silfer, to which she politely nodded in acknowledgement, father, brother. Anyart hurried over to Silfer with an earnest demeanor, apologizing, I'm sorry, my child, Silfer, it's my fault. Silfer looked bewildered at Anyart's unexpected reaction, her father, who had always been confident and pursued the glory of the family, was now apologizing to her, in her eyes, there was a mix of confusion, compassion, and sorrow. In Silfer's heart, she quietly pondered that there must have been a reason behind her father's actions in the past, the feeling of resentment and fear towards this cold-blooded family suddenly disappeared, Silfer choked up and uttered, I'm sorry, father. Sensing Silfer's emotions, Anyard appeared compassionate, as if forgiving her, he then turned to look directly at El and asked, Is this your son? Silfer flinched slightly, caught off guard. She awkwardly introduced, Yes, indeed, this is my son, El, then turned to El, attempting to smile, Ellie, this is your grandfather, El replied with a choked voice, I'm El, sir seeming unable to articulate smoothly due to overwhelming emotions, only L himself understood the reluctance behind his forced smile. And Yard immediately smiled warmly at L, indeed, I am your grandfather, it's a pleasure to meet you. L quickly recognized the true nature of Anyart in that moment, even if it was just a fleeting glimpse, while he appeared kind, there was a change in his eyes the moment he looked at him. Furthermore, 
L also noticed how swiftly Yard had assessed his mana, he couldn't help but be amazed inwardly, no, it can't be, a five-star mage at that age. Despite maintaining a smile towards L, Anyart's mind was now filled with calculations, it was already surprising enough that Silver had reached level 6, but for this kid to achieve level 5 at just 17 years old, he couldn't afford to underestimate him. L was well aware of Anyart's intentions, yet he felt no concern, as the Earl, Anyart wielded immense power over master level mages at level 7, but since L was at the same level as him, he could conceal his true abilities, and Yard wouldn't be able to recognize that L had already reached level 7. Glutton, noticing the gathering had lingered enough, suggested, Father, shall we head inside and talk, and Yard nodded in agreement, Yes, let's go as you wish. Afterwards, everyone quickly made their way inside the mansion. Sitting in the spacious living room, and Yard spoke cheerfully to Silfer, I've taken the two little girls to rest with you, I want us to have a family conversation, a heavy atmosphere began to settle in the room, Silfer calmly inquired, yes, father, what is it about? And Yart no longer concealed his ulterior motives, he straightforwardly asked Silfer, is it true that you invented the formula for creating mana crystals, Silfer was taken aback by the sudden and unexpected question, she hadn't thought that An Yart knew about this beforehand. And Yart calculated silently, if we can sell mana crystals, the wealth of the family will double. And we will wield powerful influence over the mages of the empire, this way, House Einhardt will become much stronger, and the imperial throne will no longer be the sole dominion of the royal family. The more An Yart thought, the more he desired, that power will be ours, we cannot miss this opportunity. L silently observed An Yart, Noting the greed evident in his eyes, it was clear that An Yart was plotting something. An Yart, shamelessly, made a request to his once abandoned daughter, Silfer, now that they were reunited, now that we're together again, I hope we can be open with each other, dedication to the family is your duty. Silfer felt a sense of irony, duty, she thought, without hesitation, she responded straightforwardly, but there's a condition, An Yart furrowed his brows, appearing displeased, a condition. Silfer looked seriously into An Yart's eyes with a determined attitude, make El the Earl. Both An Yart and Gledon were startled, exclaiming in unison, what, are you serious, even El was taken aback by Silfer's request. Silfer nodded firmly, of course, Ellie is the one who invented the mana crystals, I had no part in it, I'm sure even father recognized that when he assessed his mana earlier, it's remarkable that at the age of 17, L is already a level 5 mage. L looked even more surprised, his eyes widening as he gazed at Silfer, wow, even mother noticed that. Silfer continued with firm determination in her voice, among the master level mages level 8 across the continent, no one has achieved level 5 at the age of 17, Ellie will soon become a formidable mage capable of shaking the entire continent, the value of mana crystals has been recognized continent-wide, combined with the leadership of the most talented mage in the world. L couldn't help but feel overwhelmed by his mother's words. And the House Einhardt could become the greatest family on the continent, not just within the borders of the Blyard Empire, answer me, father, you'll appoint the boy as the Earl, won't you? And Yart chuckled nervously, attempting to delay, I can't make such a momentous decision right now, but Silfer was resolute in her determination to push him, no, father, I'm here with the purpose of securing Ellie's succession, you need to decide now. And Yart's smile faded instantly, shocked by Silfer's change, she was no longer the weak and easily manipulated girl she once was. Silfer continued with determination, Ellie will become even stronger than you, father, if you can't give me an answer, then I can't reveal the secret behind the mana crystals. And Yart's complexion turned pale, and he gradually revealed a gaze filled with hostility, I've never seen her like this before, she used to obey me and glutton like a lamb, but now, H.M., when she was a daughter, she was weak, but as a mother, she's strong. After a moment, Anyart spoke with a stern tone, fine. Reluctantly, 
he said, I need some time to think, I'll consider this, Silfer pondered for a moment and then nodded, I'll wait for your decision, father. Afterwards, El and Silfer returned to the room Gletton had arranged for them, they walked in silence, the hallway seeming longer with their heavy footsteps. It took a while before El could speak hesitantly, um, mom, about what you said earlier. Silfer smiled gently, reassuring El, don't worry, but of course, he still can't shake off his concerns. Just as El was about to say something, Serena and Kana emerged from their room, they had been anxious inside, so upon hearing the voices in the hallway, they quickly stepped out. Seeing the worried expressions on the girls' faces, Silfer embraced them gently, comforting them, Serena, Kana, I'm sorry for leaving you two like that. Kana and Serena anxiously held on to Silfer's hands, Mom, we were so worried, are you okay? Silfer smiled affectionately and reassured them, Yes, thank you both, I'm fine, have you two seen your room yet, let me show you. Seeing Silfer deliberately avoiding the topic, L didn't press her further. He silently entered the room with his own concerns, I didn't expect Mom to say those things, he pondered, Anyway, there's no way Father will agree to that condition, I need to plan even more carefully for my future. After a while of contemplation, El decided to summon his magic glasses. With his summoning command, a square-shaped object began to form before him and extended to both sides, resting against his temples, within moments, the glasses that the player Junhook used on Earth were resurrected here. El pushed the glasses up with confidence, his eyes didn't suffer from any refractive errors, but he needed these glasses to concentrate better. As he lifted the glasses up, El suddenly remembered the memories from his past life. It was because of these glasses that his identity as a professional gamer had been exposed. El couldn't help but smile, this reminded him of the glory days as a professional gamer, even though he had never experienced real battles, his gaming career had taught him the importance of maximizing the potential of supportive spells. Therefore, when crafting the magic glasses, El enchanted them with a spell that allowed him to sense the flow of mana more clearly, El felt excited as he thought to himself, now I'll go and see what the Earl is really plotting. Immediately, El recited the incantation for the invisibility spell, as a level 7 mage, he could cast the spell with a simple chant. As the incantation took effect, El's body became transparent, and his mana, which had already been tightly focused, began to resonate with the mana around him in the air. L, perfectly concealed by the invisibility spell, navigated through the intricacies of the Earl's mansion, heading towards the Earl's private chambers in stealth. L's appearance now blended seamlessly with the surrounding mana, and even his breath was carefully masked, it would be extremely difficult for anyone less skilled than him to detect his presence. As L was scouting to locate the Earl's chambers, he heard Gletton's voice emanating from a room at the end of the hallway, What will you do, father, will you truly appoint that child as the heir to the family estate? L cautiously approached the door to the Earl's chambers, with his extraordinary skills as a level 7 mage, he easily bypassed the physical barrier of the door. Listening intently, L heard in Yart's voice as he held a dagger in his hand, Don't make that face, her son is indeed qualified for that position. L couldn't help but feel a surge of shock and curiosity. He chuckled, twirling the dagger in his hand, a level 5 mage at just 17, he's incredibly talented. But a child raised in a foreign land for 17 years is not suitable for this family, as in Yart finished speaking, he plunged the dagger into the target on the wall. He shrugged and said to Gletton, who knows if he's here for revenge or not. Gletton breathed a sigh of relief inwardly for not being overshadowed by L, but he still wore a displeased expression, Silfer is also a level 6 mage, so that might be a big issue. And Yart chuckled as he selected another dagger, a big issue, here we have 20 mages of level 6 and above, we won't be at a disadvantage. He glanced at Gletton with a cunning look in his eyes, do you remember the letter we received from the prince? And Yart chuckled triumphantly, 
mentioning that the prince had offered to accept Silfer as a royal concubine if they agreed, Gletton appeared worried and asked in Yart, but isn't that risky, she might already know about it. Gletton hesitated, what if she becomes the prince's concubine? He continued, she might expose our scheme of secretly kidnapping talents from the empire, brainwashing them, and forcing them to serve our family. And Yard erupted in anger, shouting at Gletton to keep quiet, Gletton immediately fell silent, looking stunned. And Yard glared at him, warning that even with soundproofing spells, walls still have ears. L, hidden behind the screen, quietly mused to himself, indeed, it's a dangerous situation, while scouting around earlier, I noticed they've set up numerous magic traps, even a level 6 mage would struggle to dispel them, I need to be extremely cautious. A bold idea sparked in L's mind, if these secrets were exposed, it could potentially bring down the entire Einhardt family. Gletton, chastised, quickly lowered his head, promising not to mention it again, and Yart lowered his voice in response, praising him and reassuring him not to worry about the prince. And Yart smirked sinisterly, the prince is also involved in this matter, he won't harm himself, Gletton asked him, so what do we tell him, L, still hidden, contemplated his next move, perhaps it was time to take matters into his own hands. And Yart twirled the dagger in his hand, emphasizing the value of the prince's offer and L's talents in magic. Now, what will you do, and Yard asked, unexpectedly passing the dagger to Gletton with a stern look. Gletton, cautious and apprehensive, stared at the dagger in an Yard's hand, it seemed like a test, if he couldn't make up for his past mistakes. Gletton paused for a moment, trying to find the answer that would satisfy an Yard, then swallowed his unease. He extended his hand to accept the dagger and responded, firstly, I will assure the prince that I am pleased with the proposal to appoint Silfer as his concubine. Continuing with his deceitful scheme, he outlined his nefarious plan, then, I will capture El, I will use Silfer's method of creating magic stones in exchange for El's life, seeing Gletton pause, and Yart shot him a sidelong glance, oh, is that all? Gletton decisively thrust the dagger towards the target, the sound of the blade cutting through the air echoing sharply, as he coldly affirmed, no. As the dagger pierced straight into the target board. Gledon narrowed his eyes and continued, I will extract information about the magic stones and force Silfer to go to the prince, even if it means using force, if she resists, I will seal her magic. Gledon's next words truly shocked L to the core, then I will manipulate L's mind to make him loyal to our family, we can show the prince a body resembling L's and claim that he died in an unfortunate magic accident. As Gledon concluded his presentation, and Yart gleefully applauded and praised him, Well done, Gledon, you truly are my heir, very well, I am excited to see the results from you, and Yart enthusiastically patted his son's shoulder, I will leave this task to you, I await the outcome, Gledon's eyes sparkled with excitement, I will do my utmost. Witnessing everything firsthand, L couldn't help but feel enraged, it was indeed a family of cold-blooded individuals. L struggled to contain the rising anger, why didn't he refuse his mother's offer earlier to avoid ending up in this sinister place? As the fury grew stronger, L felt remorse and self-blame creeping in, he regretted his overconfidence in his own magical abilities. He had thought he could fulfill everything to make his mother happy no matter what happened. L felt a strong desire to respect his mother's wishes. But his own weakness had led to this situation. If they were only exploiting him, he could still handle it. L struggled to contain his anger, waiting for the right moment, however, he couldn't control himself, and his rage surged. Mana in the nearby area swirled like a tornado, and mana around L quickly moved, forming a focal point that caught in Yart's attention, he was shocked to realize that someone was using invisibility magic in the room. And Yart stared in disbelief towards the partition, realizing that someone had been sitting there all along, undetected, he yelled out loudly, demanding to know who was there. L, no longer wanting to conceal his true power, 
directly summoned the massive energy sphere. Both Inyart and Gleton were astonished by the sudden appearance of abundant mana, realizing that a level 7 mage's magic was being performed right there. Before Inyart and Gleton could fully grasp what was happening, El had gathered enough rage and energy for a colossal fireball. The father and son barely had time to react as El stepped out with a face full of pent-up fury. When rage completely consumes the mind, a normal wizard would chant spells for 10 to 30 minutes, but El was different. A powerful surge of energy flowed through his eyes, astonishing the onlookers, including the father and son duo, as dozens of mana circles expanded around El. Dozens of mana circles erupted simultaneously, unleashing a seventh-tier magic that could potentially kill thousands, now, it was detonating within the room situated at the heart of Count Einhardt's estate. Even widespread defensive magic throughout the estate couldn't halt El's magic, a hellish inferno opened up, and while the scope of El's seventh-tier magic wasn't vast, its potency surpassed even the quintessential seventh-tier fire magic. One side of the estate, where Yart's quarters lay, had been completely blown apart, the colossal building had transformed into a hellish landscape with red flames dancing around, creating a grim atmosphere amidst the shattered remnants. As the smoke and flames dissipated, Count Yart and Gleton remained unfazed, unharmed by a seventh-tier magic with such destructive force, they stared at El in disbelief. Yart exclaimed incredulously, unable to comprehend, other wizards would take up to half an hour to chant such a spell, this was a seventh-tier incantation capable of killing thousands. After the horrifying explosion, the Einhardt household soldiers rushed in, bewildered, the Count, Gleton, they were fine, who was the perpetrator. At that moment, El's voice boomed, thick with an oppressive darkness that sent shivers down the spines of those who heard it, you're still alive, he said. El floated down from the sky, halting about ten meters above the ground, glaring down at Count and Yart and his son with eyes filled with wrath and disdain, well done, my anger is too great to grant you an easy and swift end. His voice was ominous, as if echoing from the depths of hell, I assure you, I will make you suffer endlessly. I will make you regret ever laying a hand on my family, El declared with chilling determination. A faint magical circle began to glow behind El, while at the same time, rifts in space started to manifest. El extended his hand towards Count Yart and his son, his eyes gleaming with icy resolve, suffer, despair, and perish, for those who dare obstruct my path. In an instant, a burst of golden light erupted, blinding the onlookers, the spatial gate opened, and a golden knight stepped out with graceful movements. Standing over three meters tall, clad in solemn attire with golden radiance enveloping them, this was the official debut of the Golden Knight, causing the Einhardt soldiers to gasp in horror and astonishment, there, there it is, a Golden Knight, how, how can it be here? Contrary to the shocked reactions of the soldiers, Count Yart burst into delighted laughter, ah ha ha ha, even his own son couldn't understand what he was thinking. Count Yart's greedy eyes locked onto the Golden Knight, accompanied by a sinister grin, well done, this is excellent, he muttered to himself, still prioritizing the interests of his family even in this moment. The chaotic soldiers tried to reassure each other, claiming that the Golden Knight's return was fake, it's a trick, I swear under the name of Einhardt, we will stop you. After this bold declaration, the soldiers brandished their swords, charging straight towards El and the Golden Knight. The Golden Knight swiftly entered combat mode upon detecting the attackers. With a horizontal swing of their sword, the blade gleamed with radiance like that of a seasoned swordsman, a dazzling green light emanated from the sword, delivering a heavy blow that created a storm of brilliance, assaulting five soldiers at once. The soldiers cried out as they were sent flying and then collapsed to the ground, groaning in pain, Gleton exclaimed in horror, how could this be? He gazed in horror at the soldiers lying in pools of blood, all the knights gone. Once again displaying his contrary nature, 
and Yart burst into laughter upon witnessing his own men being slain by the Golden Knight, ha ha ha, of course, how could it be fake? And Yart laughed sinisterly, his eyes gleaming with ambition, with that, our family could become incredibly powerful. And Yart's greed had completely overshadowed his reason, he shouted orders to his soldiers, commanding them to attack, insisting that the enemy was still alive, demanding they kill L. And Yart stood defiantly before L, determined to force him to reveal the secrets behind the Golden Knight. A cold light seemed to freeze everything as L stared intently at Count and Yart, you're too greedy, he said icily, your life has been luxurious enough, yet, you're still not satisfied. L's words of warning fell on deaf ears, as expected, and Anyart responded with a smirk full of provocation. Unable to contain his boiling rage, L continued to unleash seventh-tier magic, the entire body of the Golden Knight was enveloped in a delicate shade of green mana. L intensified the energy flow into the Golden Knight, layering mana levels upon levels, increasing its power exponentially. The mana surged forth like a raging waterfall, flooding into every part of the Golden Knight, Glutton, standing before L's overwhelming power, couldn't help but be astonished, his mana is too strong. The brilliant light emanating from the Golden Knight dazzled Glutton, resembling the energy of a high-ranking swordsman rather than an ordinary golem, amazing, such powerful mana flow could rival that of a grand swordsman, if not surpass it. Though not as visibly shaken as Glutton, and Yart was also shocked, someone who can transmit this much power to a golem, and yet is only at level 5, but when I checked, that kid did indeed register as level 5. Now, and Yart finally understood, feeling a sense of shock and realization. The one who used that 7th tier magic. The one who created the explosion potent enough to kill thousands. Could it be, and Yart's expression turned more horrified than ever before, he had been so consumed by his ambition regarding the Golden Knight that he had overlooked this crucial detail. And Yart shifted his gaze to L, he truly is a level 7 wizard, at that moment, L turned his head to look down at an Yart from above. When their eyes met, a smirk of mockery appeared on L's lips, and Yart was certain of his own deduction upon seeing that smirk, daring to deceive me deliberately, the youngest level 7 wizard, huh. And Yart's expression immediately changed, his anger reaching a boiling point as veins bulged on his face, and he began to attack L, you arrogant brat. Unable to contain his rage, he unleashed a seventh-tier magic directly at L. Facing one of the most powerful wizards in the empire, L remained remarkably calm, looking at Anyart with a cold gaze. To counter Anyart's attack, L raised his hand and conjured a shield. Anyart's assault felt like mosquito bites against the shield, completely nullified by L's magical barrier. After deflecting the attack, L continued to stare intensely at the despicable duo, a feeling of disdain welled up within him for the two individuals who had deliberately sought to exploit him and his mother. No, these two don't even deserve that kind of familial title. After staring at them with a murderous gaze for a while, L spoke with a chilling tone, I. As L began to speak, Silfer's voice interrupted, Ellie, what's going on, dear? Serena and Kana ran after Silfer and also seemed surprised to realize that the previous explosion was caused by L. L's initially terrifyingly cold expression immediately softened, his demeanor changing drastically to one of anxiety, Mom's here. Though L knew it was impossible, he prayed that Silfer wouldn't show up, that was because he lacked the confidence to show Silfer what he would do in the future and he was also afraid of having to tell the truth to Silfer about the vile, despicable, and cruel conversation between the two and Yart family members. L remembered every word Glutton had spoken, we'll get information about the magic stone, then send Silfer to the prince, even if we have to use force, if she dares to refuse, I'll seal her magic. He also recalled the sinister satisfaction in an Yart's expression as he applauded his son, he's very suitable to be the heir. Silfer's appearance left L dumbfounded, if his mother found out, what would happen, Silfer pressed L angrily, 
Ellie, answer me, dear. But deep down, she was worried, she had never seen Elle so agitated before, could something serious have happened? Elle looked at Silfer without knowing what to say, inside, he was conflicted, torn between whether to tell the truth to his weak mother or keep it hidden. After much internal struggle, El sighed deeply, he had run out of options. He decided to give up hiding and started to use magic to let everyone know the truth. Countin Yard observed El's actions with a furrowed brow, is that spell magic notation, it's a magic that can store information like a recording. And Yard immediately understood what El was planning, could that brat have recorded our conversation earlier, if it's exposed, our family is finished, that thing must be destroyed immediately. And Yard's heart raced with urgency, he shouted to the knights gathering at the epicenter of the explosion, kill it, it's the one who caused the explosion. Silfer, upon seeing this, immediately shouted to stop him, Father, what are you saying, you haven't even asked the boy for the reason. Countin Yart glared at Silfer with terrifying eyes, but she stood her ground, Ellie is your grandson, she insisted. And Yart ignored Silfer and hurriedly urged the knights into action, quickly, he's a high-level mage, so be cautious when attacking. The knights sensed the urgency in the situation as they saw the Count urgently shouting like that, they quickly drew their swords and began to approach El. El directed his gaze towards the knight surrounding him and spoke to the golden armored knight, hold them back, but don't kill, I'm not being merciful, I just don't want to kill anyone in front of Silfer. The golden armored knight remained silent, waiting for orders, immediately, he raised his large golden sword and obeyed, as you command, master. The golden sword symbolized the golden knight, and El had poured much of his soul into it, now, the radiance emanating from the golden sword could be compared to that of a divine sword. As the golden armored knight displayed the power of the golden sword, the other knights tensed up and raised their swords high, shouting to boost their morale, aiming to destroy the golden sword. El quietly observed the tense situation, knowing the futility of it all, he silently murmured to himself, it's pointless, the golden sword is the very emblem that has built the legacy of the golden knights. The golden sword, crafted by the master dwarven blacksmiths from the purest steel, virtually free of impurities, was further encased in magical metal as a layer of enchantment. Its blade was plated with gold and inscribed with a counterattack incantation. Moreover, its sharpness and thrusting force were enhanced by magic, thus, the golden sword could rival even a divine sword in its capabilities. El silently thought, it's just like in the game I used to play, no matter how strong your army is, it will still be defeated by others if you don't regularly upgrade it. You have to keep pushing the stats of your items as high as possible, I'm a pragmatist, not an idealist. As the golden armored knight began to approach the other knights, they visibly tensed up and also emanated a radiance from their swords. The golden sword in the hands of the golden armored knight also emitted a radiant glow, but its brilliance had the colors of the rainbow, being twice the size of the swords wielded by the other knights, the golden sword's radiance was many times greater. The golden armored knight swung the sword horizontally, and the vibrant blue and gold light sparkled like shooting stars in the night sky. The sword's motion seemed gentle, but it delivered a heavy blow to the knights, the radiance emanating from the golden sword created a whirlwind that swept away the knights standing nearby. The Inyart father and son were once again taken aback, wondering what was happening. The knights of the Einhardt family, having been pushed back by the initial strike, regained their composure, don't underestimate us, they declared. The golden armored knight approached the knights once more and swung the golden sword again, its movement much faster than that of the other knights. The knights attempted to create radiance on their swords to counter the golden sword, but it was clearly a miscalculation, when the golden sword clashed with the swords of the knights, all of their swords were shattered. Following this, another whirlwind arose and immediately swept away the knights. As the golden armored knight turned towards another group of knights, they all became panicked and recoiled in fear. 
The knight standing before the golden armored knight resembled lambs facing a fierce tiger, and they began to falter in fear, murmuring, No, it can't be. Despite the imposing presence of the golden armored knight, the knights refused to give up and tried to encourage each other, Don't panic, the count's orders are absolute, we must kill that person. As the knights were rallying their spirits, a reinforcement force arrived to assist them. The white winged knights, a squadron of knights under Count and Yart, had arrived, the knights cheered as soon as they saw their captain. El carefully observed the approaching knight on horseback, who turned out to be the captain of the white winged knights, surely, he must be at the pinnacle of the Grand Swordmaster level. The commander of the white winged knights, Count Rompel, swiftly dismounted his horse and knelt before an yart, apologizing for the delay, I apologize for the delay, my lord, he said. An yart urgently urged Rompel, hurry. Rompel nodded immediately, obeying the command. Then, Rompel stood up in a dignified posture and turned towards El, I am the captain of the cavalry squadron of the Einhardt Count's family, he declared. After introducing himself, Rompel turned back to his knights and drew his sword, proclaiming, the enemy must be punished. Amidst the shouts of the knights, a radiant green glow emanated from Rompel's sword, enough to uplift the spirits of the troops. Unperturbed by Rompel's imposing presence, El calmly said to the golden armored knight, activate level 2. At the same time, a gentle and sparkling golden light radiated, tinting the surrounding space, the golden armored knight immediately received the order to break the seal. The entire body of the golden armored knight underwent a powerful transformation, the contours of its body became sharper, and it seemed to shrink slightly, resembling someone who had been working out for a long time, resulting in a more muscular and toned physique. The golden armored knight had to go through multiple stages of activation, it had rested in the bag for too long and needed to operate adequately in stage 1 before progressing, since it had already engaged in enough movement during the confrontation with the previous knights, it could now advance to stage 2 without difficulty. The knights were even more startled at the sight, wondering why it had changed. L chuckled silently at their bewildered expressions, knowing that this was just the beginning. At that very moment, the golden sword also began to transform, its radiance gradually gathering back together. Then, the radiance quickly accumulated to form a giant sword double the size of its original dimensions. Not only were the low-level knights amazed, but Rompel was also shocked, even the celestial sword. The golden knight marched straight towards Rompel, who was gaping in awe at the sword on the golden sword's blade. Rompel immediately stepped forward and brandished his sword, displaying his dominance, you look so weak, even with the celestial sword, you are no match for me. Rompel and the golden knight simultaneously charged at each other with their powerful swords. Clang, a deafening sound echoed, as the two swords clashed under the anticipation of the knights for their commander and also a high-level swordmaster. A loud explosion followed by a dazzling burst of light illuminated the area. L calmly observed the clash without any hint of worry, according to his estimation, at this level, the Golden Knight could fight against a swordmaster like Rompel without encountering any difficulty. After the blinding light subsided, the scene that unfolded shattered the hearts of all the knights. Rompel's sword was stained with blood as it plunged straight into the ground. He knelt on one knee, his body also covered in blood. Rompel groaned as he realized that the Golden Knight had reduced him to such a state with just a single clash, no, it couldn't be true, I, I. Before Rompel could finish his sentence, he collapsed unconscious with a short groan. The Golden Knight had defeated the high-ranking swordsman with just one strike, leaving the lower-ranked knights trembling in fear, they began to back away, unable to comprehend, the commander had, had. With Rompel dealt with, the Golden Knight moved swiftly, aiming straight for an yard and the knights behind him before striking down. An yard hastily raised his shield, but he only shielded himself and his son, ignoring the knights who were blown away by the Golden Knight's sword. 
And Yart sneered, his mouth curling in disdain as he criticized the fallen knights, remarking how quickly they had met their demise. Quietly observing from the sidelines all this while, L was now paying attention to a group of figures dressed in black cloak standing in the distance, they were gathering again, this time it seemed to be the mages, it appeared that all the mages from the earl's family had come here because of the significant disturbance. L thought to himself, as predicted by the Einhardt family, the family with a mage army rivaling the Tower of Magic, things were bound to not end easily. Despite knowing that this battle would become even more difficult, L had embarked on a path that couldn't be changed anymore, he turned towards Silfer and spoke in a subdued voice, Mother. L hesitated, asking Silfer, the very essence of this magic. Are you ready to know the truth, Mother? L asked, looking seriously into Silfer's eyes. Silfer didn't hesitate as she raised her hand, of course, she replied inwardly, thinking that Ellie must have a good reason for acting this way, there must be something very serious contained within, something that could harm not only her husband and son but also the Einhardt family. And Yart looked at the two of them, his heart filled with worry, he couldn't let his daughter see that. He wanted to attack immediately and erase the contents preserved by El, but his vigilant gaze couldn't leave the Golden Knight, the skills of this golem, unless one of the ten most powerful mages on the continent is here, could not be defeated. And Yart looked back at El with rising unease, even if the boy was a level seven mage, if he, Glutton, and the mages in the family joined forces, they could surely overpower it, but if it tried to escape, they couldn't stop it, in that case, everything would end, the Einhardt family would cease to exist. And Yart ground his teeth, perhaps sinking into tangled thoughts, what should he do? While Count and Yart was lost in thought, L was casting a spell on Silfer. The magic L was performing was a spatial isolation spell, allowing someone to step into a completely separate space detached from the outside world. Serena and Kana approached with curiosity, Mother, we can't see inside. After L cast the spell to provide Silfer with a private space, she opened his memory record. Each scene began to unfold before Silfer's eyes like a movie. The story of the prince and his request letter unfolded. The secret about those who underwent mind-wiping and the magical stones unfolded. The story of Anyart and his son planning to wipe El's mind and turn him into a mage serving the family revealed itself. Every cold, heartless expression of the father and son was vividly and authentically reproduced. The vivid images and sounds hit Silfer's eyes, leaving her stunned. She couldn't believe that such immoral and cruel stories had occurred behind her back. A groan escaped Silfer's mouth, her eyes filled with horror and fear. A sense of utter despair overwhelmed Silfer, causing her to collapse. When she reunited with her family after seventeen years, Silfer never imagined that her family would try to use her as a sacrificial pawn, the disappointment tore at her heart, she had always thought her father saw her as family, and they would always be father and daughter, she had been so happy, but it was all a deception. Moreover, witnessing firsthand their scheming to forcibly take the magical stones filled Silfer with horror and trembling, tears streamed down her face, and a sense of self-blame filled her mind. Silfer cried uncontrollably in self-blame, knowing the dark side of the family better than anyone, yet still bringing Ellie here. There was no warmth here, only the cruel people. She had thought that what happened to her wouldn't happen to Ellie again. But those people not only wanted to exploit me but also Ellie, they were planning to wipe the boy's mind. I had thought I would never forgive my father for killing my husband. But I can't hate him because I believe the prince ordered him to do so. But that's not true, these people don't know what love or family means. Everything they do is to gain power. That's their nature, which I have never admitted. No matter how painful it is, no matter how much I want to deny that truth. This time, I have to accept it. After Silfer thought it through, the isolated space around her vanished, 
She tried to swallow back her tears because being sad and disappointed was still better than being trapped in a deceitful world. Elle quietly observed Silfer's expression, continuously worrying that she wouldn't be able to handle this shock. Silfer stepped forward determinedly, internally resolving to face the truth. She looked up at Elle with a steadfast gaze, saying, Ellie, I won't run away anymore. Despite being relieved that Silfer didn't collapse entirely, Elle still felt a pang of sadness at her resilience. A glimmer of light appeared in Elle's green eyes as he furrowed his brow, looking into Silfer's teary eyes. Elle quickly understood that those tears, mother couldn't resent them no matter how great the pain they caused, because they were family. Even though Silfer didn't harbor hatred towards them, Elle was different, he glared fiercely at the two, and Yart and his son, at the same time, mana around Elle began to boil as if responding to his will. Elle's eyes narrowed with an aura spreading through the air, you too, he exclaimed with determination, I will give you your final judgment. With a gesture of fury, Elle raised his hand high. A phoenix with jet black feathers like a crow was summoned. The phoenix let out a roar as if it wanted to tear through space itself. The ear-piercing sound reverberated everywhere, causing the knights to clutch their heads in agony. Even Glutton couldn't withstand the tremendous pressure of that scream, the power was so great that it made him kneel right there. Seeing his son's state, Anyart, without a hint of pity, spoke with a tone tinged with admiration, oh, using sound pressure to diminish the opponent's spirit, even capable of making Glutton tremble with a level 5 magic, how can you reach level 7 at the age of 17? And Yart smirked, looking at L with satisfaction, well done, L, your talent is truly remarkable. He even shamelessly suggested to L, it's not too late yet, would you like to become a member of the family, L looked at him with eyes full of contempt and disgust. In An Yart's eyes at this moment, there was a craving, Unable to resist pulling in a talented person like L into the family would be a big loss. He began to tempt L with conditions, if you stand with us, I can assure you that we will overlook what you have done, as if nothing ever happened, I will ensure your safety, including your mother and the other children. Behind the facade of persuasion lay a threat to Silfer's safety, aiming to intimidate L, and Yart grinned, his laughter twisted and sinister, what do you think? L continued to gaze at him with cold eyes, sensing the peculiar manipulation at play here, the mind-wiping threat, perhaps. He silently mocked an Yart, not only targeting his own father and other mages, but now even himself, the old man was truly despicable. L gazed down at an Yart with a jumble of emotions, resentment, hatred, disdain, disgust. After a while, L finally broke the silence. I have a question. Seeing L still maintaining a hostile attitude, and Yart felt a tinge of bitterness, hmm, couldn't wipe its mind, it has truly reached level 7. L asked in a cold tone, how could you do this to your own family, he didn't expect to evoke any affection from an Yart, merely curious as to why he would behave this way. After a moment of surprise, an Yart grinned calmly. His sly smile gradually turned into the sinister laugh of a true villain. And Yart replied calmly, many noble families sell their own children in exchange for the prosperity of the family, it's perfectly normal. L stared in shock at An Yart's indifferent attitude, he immediately realized, this old man was. A demon. And Yart continued calmly, now it's my turn to ask, where did you learn to chant this powerful incantation? achieving level 7 at 17, truly remarkable. He blatantly revealed his craving for power and strength like a hungry demon, tell me the secret, he demanded. L remained silent for a moment, then tossed his hair in a cool manner. Under the curious gaze of everyone, L calmly declared, I researched it on my own. And Yard asked again with an insistent attitude, you're joking, aren't you, L shrugged nonchalantly and replied, Nope, it's true, I researched everything myself. At that moment, Anyart's anger flared up, he was furious at L's untruthful answer, 
it seems you don't want to tell me the truth, do you, in an instant, L saw the shadow of the demon deeply entrenched in Inyart's soul. L bluntly replied, exactly, why should I tell you the truth, people like you are the ones I detest the most, those who only see their family as tools to achieve what they want. L raised his hand unexpectedly, but I'll propose something to you, he said, and Yart eagerly asked, what is it? L began to strike at Yart's weakness, if my family and I were to leave now and spread the truth about what you've done, you'll be in big trouble, won't you, and Yart feigned innocence, asking, what are you trying to say? He smirked, taking out a coin and saying, this coin contains a magical inscription, recording everything I've learned just now. Seeing this, Lord and Yart became more urgent, what do you mean, but L remained silent, playing with Yart's tense heart. The more Yart thought, the more worried, frustrated, and uncomfortable he felt, this truth would threaten Einhardt, but the fact that the prince was involved in the kidnapping and mind-wiping was equally damaging. If conflict erupts between the empire and countless noble families whose children have been kidnapped, even a mighty empire like Blyard could potentially collapse. L confidently pointed at the uneasy in Yart and his son, you too, he said, if you don't want me to spread this truth everywhere, then fight. No one else will interfere, I believe we need to fight a smart battle to come out ahead, if you can defeat me, I'll destroy the coin and disappear. Feeling that this condition was too easy to overcome, and Yart didn't hesitate to command his son, get ready, Glutton. As a mage of the same level as L, and Yart brimmed with confidence as he declared, if we attack him simultaneously, we'll gain the upper hand, let's give it our all. And Yart's mouth couldn't contain his laughter, and his arrogance spurred on Glutton, who smirked with a cocky grin, let's do it, he said. Seeing the two of them gradually manipulating the mana around them, L also began to focus his energy. L took a slow breath as the energy surged from his core, pushing the reaction of the mana around him, the mana density around him quickly changed. Focusing his intention on the incantation, a massive amount of mana rapidly accumulated in his hands, you've underestimated me, he remarked. I'll show you what desperation feels like, L shouted as he unleashed a thunderous barrage towards the father and son. The energy streams of the three level seven mages collided. Resulting in an inevitable explosion that rocked the night sky, the capital city was illuminated as if it were daytime in one corner. At this moment, in the royal palace, a secret meeting is taking place, Duke Klein enters the grand palace where Emperor Oscar resides, kneeling with one leg and bowing his head, paying homage to his majesty. Oscar speaks in a solemn tone to Klein, I'm sure you've heard the recent news, there's a witness claiming that seventh level magic has been used, Klein responds respectfully, yes, your majesty, I've also heard of this. The emperor closes his eyes, contemplating for a few seconds, then says to Klein, this is an extremely serious matter, if it's related to some experiment of Einhardt's magic and the explosion is a result of that, they must be held accountable, however, if it's a matter concerning the noble family of the Marquis, let it prolong as long as possible before addressing it, we'll deal with it later. Klein, somewhat taken aback, raises his head to look at Oscar, may I ask the reason, your majesty, he inquires, the emperor smiles with a cold gleam in his eyes, the Marquis's noble family holds too much power already, this is a good opportunity to rein them in a bit, he explains. Oscar then poses a question to Klein, laden with implication, do you agree, Duke Klein, Klein's eyes flicker with a hint of horror, but he maintains his composure and replies, I concur with that, your majesty. Facing the emperor, Klein cannot help but feel a sense of dread, Oscar is indeed a formidable individual, previously, he had mentioned the necessity of having a strong opposing force within the empire, and secretly aided the Marquis Einhardt's family in gaining power. However, now that he has become overly powerful, the Emperor wishes to deliver a few blows to him, indeed, His Majesty holds all the power in his hands. Oscar issues a solemn command to Klein, I will assign you ten knights from the Royal Guard and one hundred from the Central Guard, 
you must handle this well, I entrust it all to you, Duke Klyon. Klyon immediately lifts his head and responds, Yes, your majesty, I understand and will execute your orders diligently. He dares not linger any longer, quickly rising to his feet. With your permission, your majesty, he requests, as Duke Klyon prepares to depart, a voice from outside interrupts, your majesty. al strides in eagerly, catching Oscar's attention, what is it, al the emperor asks, furrowing his brow at his son, I have a proposal to make, al responds promptly. al glances at Klyon, are you planning to visit the Marquis Einhardt's estate, your grace, Klyon nods, indeed, your highness. With zeal evident in his demeanor, al addresses Oscar, then, please allow me to accompany him, I will seize this opportunity to cut off the Marquis's power. Internally, al calculates, well, that's just something I should do. Meanwhile, Oscar ponders al proposal, he understands that his son must have more motives than simply wanting to quell the Einhardt family's influence. Oscar's intuition proves correct, al true target is Silfer. In al mind now resides only a burning desire for Silfer, surely, this time, I will turn her into mine, he resolves. Oscar displays a hint of skepticism as he questions al -Qaid, oh, you think you can suppress the Marquis's family? al promptly presents a seemingly reasonable justification, yes, father, I believe I can do it, it will also provide me with valuable experience. Oscar chuckles, pleased to see his son showing signs of maturity, very well, he approves, go and see what's happening at the Marquis's estate, al nods respectfully, yes, your majesty, before leaving. Immediately after, Klyon and al depart from the palace, al politely addresses Klyon, I am pleased to have the opportunity to work with you, Duke Klyon. Klyon responds to al with a compliment on his social grace, likewise, your highness, since you are also involved, I'm not sure if my presence is truly necessary. Despite having shown deference, Klyon is met with al arrogant expression and sardonic smile, well, perhaps not, al retorts, a hint of mockery in his tone, indeed, Klyon thinks to himself, that seems about right. al arrogant demeanor irks Klyon, causing him to furrow his brow in annoyance, yet he refrains from saying anything further. However, al is determined to assert his authority in front of Klyon and the others, eager to demonstrate his power, let me show you my resolve, he declares confidently. The soldiers behind him immediately cheer in support, further fueling al qaeds satisfaction as he throws his head back triumphantly. And so, al qaeda proudly strides forward, leading his troops towards the Einhard estate. Meanwhile, the battle at the Einhard estate rages on, with over half of the estate reduced to rubble from El's relentless onslaught. El is determined not to prolong the conflict to avoid the disadvantage of facing multiple opponents, mana is concentrated densely in his hands as he unleashes the spells of the Lord's Hand, conjuring a gigantic hand made of mana, towering up to three meters high, mercilessly assaulting any yard in its path. An yard shows no fear but rather amusement, impressive display of magic, indeed, he remarks. He seems uninterested in avoiding the gigantic hand reaching for him, normally, his body would be cleaved in two when countering an attack at this moment, but if he were to employ Einhardt's technique, it would be a different story. At the same time, behind an yard, Glutton is deep in concentration, channeling his power into the flames on his hands. Glutton launches his assault on L with the ferocious firestorm, the most powerful spell within the range of level 6 magic, aiming to buy time for Anyart to begin his incantation. Caught off guard by the unexpected counterattack, El swiftly dispels the Lord's hand and deftly dodges to the side, Anyart, feeling self-assured, continues to gather mana while Glutton unleashes the power of the Inferno, impressive, Anyart remarks, observing how even level 6 magic can be wielded in such a short time. The swirling blaze rushes toward El, who promptly erects a barrier, the inferno crashes against the barrier with full force. 
Seeing L being pushed back, Anyart launches a lightning bolt, which manages to intercept Glutton's firestorm spell, however, L is still too inexperienced to confront him directly. Although the stone wall is a defensive magic that holds an advantage over fire magic, it cannot withstand the power of level 6 magic and quickly crumbles, shards of stone fly in all directions. As the stone shards fly back towards L, he immediately casts a spell on his own body. In the blink of an eye, a magical shield gently envelopes L's entire body. The stone shards flying back towards L are immediately deflected by this magical shield. Then, a dense concentration of mana surrounding L begins to form a fierce storm, sweeping up the falling debris like rain towards an yard and his father, they gasp in disbelief, realizing the impending danger, no, it can't be, they exclaim. L shows no hesitation in launching another attack, using the same spell Glutton had just employed, Firestorm. In less than a minute, L completes a level 6 magic spell, demonstrating a terrifying speed unmatched by other mages, and with no compromise in power. The scene leaves Glutton astonished and dumbfounded, the boy had only glanced at the Einhardt technique once, yet he could transform faster than Glutton himself, who already surpassed other mages of the same level due to his rapid spell casting, this is beyond belief. Damn it, after a string of curses, Glutton swiftly increases his mana and casts a defensive spell, after chanting the incantation three times, a shimmering barrier forms around him. Like most mages in dire situations, Glutton resorts to using defensive magic before employing an instantaneous teleportation spell to flee. Gradually, Glutton's body fades into a void in space, seemingly escaping the imminent danger, however, just as he believes he has managed to withstand the fiery storm, cracks begin to appear in the shield. A stroke of luck allows him to teleport just in time as the shield shatters within the fiery storm. Seconds later, not far away, Glutton's figure gradually reappears. His body hovers in midair after using flight magic to escape from L, he scans the surroundings, searching for any trace of him. L suddenly appears behind Glutton, his voice cold and mocking, too late. Startled, Glutton whirls around in a panicked reflex, what, how, fear grips him even tighter, this boy is too fast. At that moment, L begins to chant the next incantation, his eyes filled with deadly intent, ready to end Glutton's life immediately. As L begins his incantation, Glutton, startled, instinctively retreats backward. While L chants, Glutton, in a panic, once again resorts to his teleportation magic, darting away, however, L remains calm, watching him intently. It turns out L has already completed his incantation, the Vong Lak Fong seal spell has begun to unfold, threads of mana chase after Glutton like hunting snakes, L mocks Glutton, too slow. Glutton and L are both 7th level wizards, so their magical network doesn't have much effect, however, L's purpose isn't lofty, he just wants to disrupt Glutton's nervous system, and he succeeds. Seeing L's spider web like magic, which is only 3rd level, and Yart smirks arrogantly, Glutton can still counter this magic. This spider web like magic is weak against fire magic, so Glutton quickly uses fire to burn it down. Seeing L's mana threads dissipate rapidly, he laughs triumphantly, things like this can't do anything to me. And Yart stands aside, observing with a smug expression, he mocks L, such a pity, L. He arrogantly reveals a victorious smile, your illusionary magic is nothing compared to fire magic. But that was L's intention all along, when using high-level magic, he needs time, even just for a moment, as he believes he'll have enough time to attack during that gap, and the idea succeeds, when the illusionary magic dissipates, L sneaks up on Glutton. L unleashes a close-range attack spell, pushing Glutton against the wall. He is almost unable to counterattack, however, when Glutton is pushed to the brink, he unexpectedly smirks. At that moment, Anyart unleashes his own magic, as if the two had planned beforehand, 
he has gathered enough mana and intervenes at the crucial moment, well done, glutton, everything is unfolding just as I planned, he remarks triumphantly. And Yart smirks confidently as he directs his attack straight at L, it's almost over now. The magic he unleashes this time is a lightning strike, a seventh level thunder magic stronger than a mere lightning spell, after Anyart's incantation, a bolt of lightning tears through the sky and strikes down. Both Anyart and his son gaze proudly at the dazzling golden bolt of lightning striking down, its crackling electricity creating an overwhelming sensation throughout the area. L, too, is astonished by the formidable lightning magic, a thunderous attack capable of electrocuting thousands if it hits armored soldiers. In L's eyes gleams the radiant golden light of the lightning bolt heading straight towards him, yet he doesn't flinch or attempt to dodge it, instead, he stands there, staring blankly at it. At the moment of truth, when all seems lost, L suddenly smiles. For others, lightning strike might be the most powerful magic, but for L, it's a magic easily countered by Earth's knowledge, with a shout, L conjures forth a colossal steel rod, a lightning rod. This is a scientific magic capable of neutralizing all thunder magic, plunging it into despair, the steel rod vibrates with a loud boom and swiftly swallows up Anyart's massive lightning bolt. Under the stunned gazes of Anyart and his son, the lightning strike disappears cleanly as if it had never occurred, the lightning rod not only neutralizes the lightning strike but also seems to satisfy its hunger as it vibrates contentedly. Spectators are left bewildered, their emotions intensifying towards the one who created the lightning strike, it seems absurd, impossible. And Yart's ultimate attack has vanished in vain, all his nerves are directed towards the lightning rod that has swallowed up the lightning strike without a trace, what kind of magic is this? Meanwhile, L looks upon his accomplishment with prideful eyes, not bad at all. As everyone is in shock and curiosity, especially under the ravenous gaze of an yard fixated on the lightning rod, L smirks disdainfully. He chuckles mockingly, taunting an yard's foolish question, why should I tell you, revealing information to enemies isn't wise, is it? An yard's expression twists immediately at L's arrogant and mocking words. In truth, L is quietly laughing inside because he never had the chance to test this idea before, and he never expected it to be so successful. L smiles proudly as he looks at the lightning rod, it's indeed very effective, the entire lightning strike has been absorbed by it. L highly values compatibility when using magic, and over the years, he has studied the complementary nature of different types of magic, typically, fire magic is considered to be opposed to water magic, but this isn't always the best defensive strategy. Indeed, Fire magic has the ability to boil water and even scorch its user. Using basic scientific knowledge from Earth, L has been curious about how different types of magic interact with each other since he was young, he has conducted extensive research to understand how magic systems influence each other. Ultimately, he deduced a principle, fire magic can be sealed by earth magic, and earth magic can seal water magic. Exactly. Rock and metal magic can indeed counter air magic. However, lightning magic is particularly complex to counter. Rock and earth magic can hinder it, but if the lightning magic is too strong, this method won't be effective. That's when L came up with the idea of the lightning rod column from his previous life, and now he is extremely satisfied with his experiment, truly splendid, this is also the first time I've tried, but it completely seals the level 7 lightning spell. After a while of self-conceit with his own research, L coldly glanced down below. His eyes went straight to Gletton, who was standing nearby dumbfounded by what he had just witnessed. Gletton quickly realized that L was aiming at him once again, his face stiffened with fear. Remembering the cause of this conflict, L roared in anger, enough is enough. Of course, L had no intention of punishing Glutton lightly, even though he was just a minor antagonist, he had already given him the full force of his wrath with a slap across the face. Glutton was struck by the gigantic hand, forced down to the ground, 
flattened like the scene of the Buddha subduing Mara beneath Mount Meru. He immediately lost consciousness, blood gushing from his body, it felt as if all his internal organs were crushed, leaving his body a mess of chaos. Anyart was shocked, turning to look at his son but unable to do anything more. At this moment, El laughed and his cold, sharp gaze looked straight into Anyart's eyes, full of challenge, one down, one to go, huh. El smirked mischievously, taunting Anyart, he fell too quickly, didn't he, well, I won't say I couldn't fully demonstrate my skills because there's only two of us fighting now, but I can assure you, from now on, things will be harsher for you. L calmly looked down at Glutton and sighed as if expressing sympathy to the Einhardt family, he'll be bedridden for about a year, and it's uncertain whether he'll ever regain his magical skills. After a few seconds of contemplation for the unfortunate Glutton, L pointed straight at Anyart's face and declared, Now, it's your turn. With a gesture, El invoked a dark magic spell, summoning dozens of arrows that fell like rain aimed at Anyart, it was a low-level spell, but because it was wielded by El, its power and speed were beyond imagination. After what had just transpired, Anyart dared to not underestimate El anymore, he was even slightly startled, El's magic was no joke. To counter the onslaught of arrows, and Yart quickly erected a mana shield to cover his body. As El's arrows were blocked, and Yart continued chanting, summoning a powerful fire magic spell like a flamethrower aimed at El. El gracefully dodged the flames and immediately prepared for his next offensive move. El roared with overwhelming confidence, infinite requiem, as the incantation mixed with the infinite, tiny yet seemingly endless magical arrows were generated around him, Mana surged from his veins and the dense concentration of mana in the atmosphere continuously interacted with each other, creating hundreds, thousands of magical arrows with just one incantation from El. In El's eyes flickered a bright and thrilled spark, even though individually they seemed small and weak, when combined, they became formidable. And Yart gritted his teeth in frustration, he couldn't believe El would resort to such a low-level magic to combat a master like himself. Confident in his abilities at level 7, Anyart easily blocked the small arrows with his immense mana shield. He exuded a fierce aura, creating a gigantic shield that successfully intercepted the barrage of arrows, one after another, like pouring rain, each successive onslaught seemed to strain the shield more, with cracks gradually appearing. The cracks on the shield widened, and even though it hadn't shattered yet, the force of the continuous barrage of arrows was enough to overwhelm Anyart to the point where he could no longer stand firm. Anyart was horrified by the overwhelming sense of disdain flooding his mind, he screamed with a voice devoid of composure, No, no, this can't be, I can't lose to such ordinary magic. A person as arrogant as Anyart would naturally feel infuriated in this current situation, he silently lamented, how could I be hindered by these second-rate spells when I'm hailed as one of the strongest mages on the continent? The more Anyart looked at El, the more terrified he became, how could it be, a mere 17-year-old kid like him? Anyart's eyes widened in panic, no, he's only 17 years old. He felt increasingly doubtful and uneasy, that talent and strategy, like someone with experience from many battles, could it be the jest of some great wizard? In a fleeting moment, Anyart seemed to catch a glimpse of El's form from his past life, finally, he muttered, It's you. Who is there? While lost in endless thoughts, Anyart's shield reached its limit and shattered. Anyart couldn't react in time to do anything else, the moment the magical shield shattered was also the moment his life came to a definitive end. The magical arrows pierced through the shattered shield like glass shards, and without delay, they began to collide with Anyart's entire body. It was a horrific pain beyond words, not just physical but El also skillfully controlled them, not aiming at instantly fatal parts, but focusing on areas where the opponent could feel the most intense pain. After hundreds of arrows with piercing sharpness penetrated Anyart's body, he fell to the ground amidst the horrified gaze of everyone, including the duke. 
The knights were shocked to the point of trembling, my lord, it's unbelievable, the current state of an yard is truly terrifying, blood oozing from every pore of his body, a more wretched sight than that of a corpse. L. calmly stepped down on the ground in front of Anyart's completely weakened body. L. stared intently at Anyart with eyes full of disdain, I won't kill you, but I will take away your ability to use magic. I will give you the same fate you intended for my mother, L. growled at the unconscious Anyart, as if addressing the inner demon within him. L. made the decision without hesitation, and Anyart lay unconscious on the ground, unaware of the horror awaiting him. In a burst of rage once again, El exclaimed, I will tear you apart, at the same time, mana around El began to surge violently, and he immediately unleashed his magic. At this moment, perhaps no one could stop El's wrath anymore, he was determined to fulfill his vow, to shatter bones. Just as El was about to unleash a level 6 magic that could obliterate the entire skeletal structure of a human, he jolted as he heard a familiar voice, commanding him to stop. L halted his actions, then turned his gaze towards Silver standing behind him. As L turned to face Silver, he saw a sadness tinged in her eyes, and she seemed uneasy despite L exacting revenge on her behalf. The rage within L suddenly subsided, replaced by a sense of guilt, even though he had done nothing wrong here. L then turned his gaze to Serena, the innocent girl with fear drowning in her eyes, clearly shaken by everything that had just unfolded. Afterward, he glanced at Kana, though she appeared strong on the outside, Kana was also fragile within, and surely she was shocked to see El unleashing such violence. Finally, El's gaze settled on Silfer, her brow furrowed pleadingly, begging him, please, that's enough. Standing amidst the rubble and witnessing the fallen bodies, Silfer tried to counsel El, Ellie, stop this, please. El looked at his mother in bewilderment, unable to comprehend what Silfer was thinking, a heavy feeling weighed on El's mind, and Silfer's gaze seemed to imply that he had just committed grievous wrongs. At this moment, Silfer was experiencing a blend of emotions, she knew how talented Ellie was, but never thought he could reach level 7 at this age. He had created a golem that no one could replicate, and its strength could defeat a high-level swordsman with just one blow. In my unawareness, inattention. My child has become such a powerful mage. But the one Ellie fought was his own father, I cannot forgive his attempt to kill Ellie, but I cannot let Ellie kill his grandfather either. With a simple thought of not wanting El's hands stained with blood anymore, Silfer firmly addressed her son, you have taught them a lesson already, I don't think they would dare to repeat it. However, El responded to his mother's plea with resolute refusal, explaining, I cannot allow that, if we spare them, someday they will seek revenge on us. Silfer tried to persuade El, acknowledging his concerns as valid, but emphasizing that his actions were not right, she suggested an alternative, if you take away the duke's magical abilities, they won't act recklessly anymore, however, things won't be simple afterward because the empire won't let it slide. Faced with Silfer's reasoning, El delved into more cautious thinking, mother is right, he acknowledged silently. The duke held a significant position within the empire, if El were to strip him of his magical abilities, the empire would undoubtedly retaliate and hunt them down, pushing the matter further here wouldn't only endanger himself but also others in the family. I truly just want to tear him apart, El admitted internally, but. After weighing his options more thoroughly, El sighed and made a decision, all right, he said. As El's demeanor became more relaxed, the swirling mana around him also dissipated, ceasing the threat to an yard, who remained motionless. Approaching his family, El spoke gently, with our abilities, we can go anywhere, let's find a peaceful place to live, Silfer breathed a sigh of relief, nodding in agreement, all right, let's go together, she said. As they prepared to leave, Silfer hesitated, clutching El's sleeve with a troubled and regretful expression, she spoke haltingly, you were right, my child, I was foolish. Silfer explained her dilemma, admitting her mistake, 
I tried to turn you into the duke to secure the family succession, but now everything has turned out like this. She looked at her son with eyes full of mixed emotions, sadness, regret, and sorrow, power may be important, but the bond within our family is equally crucial, she added. Listening to Silfer's explanation, L bowed his head in acknowledgement, yes, you're right, he said. When he lifted his head to look at the three women, L seemed to emit a gentle radiance, a warm glow enveloping him, he gently proposed to Serena and Cana, I want you two to come with me, you'll come with us. The three women were wide-eyed at El's angelic presence, bringing warmth and light into their lives, Serena and Cana were momentarily surprised, never having thought they had the right to decide their own futures, they had always felt insecure about their status as former slaves, rescued and cared for by El's family, they had assumed that following El's family was the natural course of action. After a few moments of staring at El in awe, Kana excitedly replied, Of course, we'll always be together. Serena chimed in eagerly, forever and ever, with a radiant smile on her face. Silfer simply nodded silently, smiling at her son in agreement. Finally able to let go of the negative emotions, El joined in the laughter, thanking everyone. Before leaving this place of pain and inhumanity, he turned to call the Golden Knight. The Golden Knight, who had been waiting on the sidelines, immediately stepped forward to face El. The Golden Knight knelt solemnly and bowed deeply, showing utmost respect to El, yes, my lord, he responded. El smiled warmly at the Golden Knight and praised him, you've done well, I'll give you a name. El seemed to have already thought of a name and was just waiting for the right moment to say it, your name shall be Tana, he declared, as soon as the name was given, Tana, the golden knight, emitted a radiant light, a manifestation of joy and gratitude, thank you, master, he expressed gratefully. El smiled satisfactorily and turned towards his family, beginning to recite the incantation to open the spatial portal, let's go now, he said. Just then, a deep, resonant voice pierced their ears, I won't allow that to happen, a mysterious figure emerged from the shadows, capturing everyone's attention. Before anyone could see clearly who the newcomer was, suddenly, behind the Golden Knight's helm, a gleam of light flickered. Immediately after, a surge of energy, like a raging wave, swept towards El's family, fortunately, the Golden Knight swiftly stood in front, shielding them from the unexpected attack. Raising his sword in defense, the Golden Knight's golden light exploded, clashing with the incoming energy. The green and golden energies confronted each other, each trying to push the other's energy away, creating waves of light spreading out like ripples. L looked at the mysterious middle-aged man, who was generating immense energy, his expression turning to astonishment, he's too strong, he thought. While L was still pondering the identity of the skilled unknown individual, Al-Qaeda suddenly approached with a smirk, ha ha ha, it's indeed Duke Klyan, the captain of the royal guard, he declared. At the mention of Al-Qaeda's title, El's face paled, the prince, so, the person next to him must be, he realized, it could only be the commander of the royal guard, one of the ten master swordsmen on the continent, El dared not underestimate them, immediately, he ordered the golden knight, Tana, to activate level 3 mode. As the final seal on the Golden Knight was released, the mana flowing around him became even more intense. In the blink of an eye, the Golden Knight underwent a transformation, previously, he had been straining to block Klein's attacks, but now he seemed more relaxed, effortlessly deflecting the intense energy from his opponent. Then, a burst of power erupted from the Golden Knight, in an instant, his energy pushed back Duke Klein. Klyan let out a grunt of surprise as he was pushed back, immediately swinging his sword to deflect the incoming energy. A quick glance was enough to determine who had caused the disturbance, he took a small breath and looked at El, who stood unwaveringly in the face of a grand swordsman's gaze. Klyan asked El, who are you, his eyes were sharp and powerful, filled with vigor and honesty, with genuine admiration in his voice, he continued, impressive, 
a talent like yours should stand with the empire. L stared intently at Klein, a man who seemed very upright, Klein continued speaking confidently, unfortunately, you've attacked the Einhardt family, an important clan of the empire, equivalent to challenging the Blyard empire itself. He sighed with a hint of regret, shaking his head as he addressed L, I didn't want conflict with a young talent like you, but. Seeing Klein's hesitation, al suddenly interjected, his voice loud and aggressive, what are you saying, Duke Klein? al asserted his command over Klein, declaring, for the honor of the empire, we cannot let these rebels off so easily. While urging Klein to fight, the prince's gaze turned lustfully towards Silver standing behind L, he chuckled darkly under his breath, we must kill them to capture Silver. Seeing the lustful gleam in al eyes, L clenched his fists in anger, that despicable man, he thought bitterly. With that despicable act by al Qaeda, El made an immediate decision, he looked at Duke Klein and spoke with a cold voice, I apologize, Duke Klein, but I have no intention of siding with the Empire. Because I want to kill that scoundrel, El's aura was filled with determination as he directly faced al Qaeda, declaring a death sentence reserved only for him, he should have peacefully left by now, blaming only the prince for sticking his head into the noose. El commanded the Golden Knights, led by Tana, to intercept Duke Klein, Tana responded with intermittent words, Master, understood, executing orders. In the hand of the Golden Knight, a bright glow emanated. At the same time, the blade of the sword appeared, infused with a radiant golden light, gleaming like a shining mirror reflecting sparkling light. Klein showed no hesitation before the majestic presence of the Golden Knight, he boldly raised his sword in challenge, saying, Come then, bring it on. Beside them, El stood facing al Qaeda and began to levitate in mid-air. Your enemy is me, he declared, gazing straight at al Qaeda with a cold, piercing stare, emanating a sense of lethal determination, so let's begin. As the prince received El's icy glare, though he didn't outwardly show it, despair crept into his heart, El's grim words continued to pour forth, I spared you once, but when you dared to look at my mother with such eyes, I will not spare you again. As El was surging with deadly intent, the gentle voice of Silfer softly echoed, Ellie. Silfer, filled with concern, urged El, can't we just walk away, fighting the prince is too dangerous. El looked at Silfer in astonishment, realizing the worry that occupied her mind. El smiled gently at Silfer's words and nodded reassuringly, Mom, don't worry, I have a plan, letting him go would be more dangerous. Then, El redirected his gaze forward, his intentions shifting, he no longer felt the need to emphasize direct confrontation with the prince. Of course, El's sole target remained the prince, but the approach to attack had to change from his initial plan. After a silent invocation by El, Countless magical arrows began to materialize around him, the infinite ghostly arrows, once used to defeat Count and Yart, were now summoned again, in the blink of an eye, hundreds of magical arrows were shot down to the ground simultaneously, aimed directly at the prince's entourage. The knights, reaching the level of mastery with bodies as tough as armor, unlike mages and regular people, were nearly unaffected by the magical arrows created by El, even though their destructive power was equivalent to third-tier magic. However, El's purpose in using the ghostly arrows was not to inflict damage but to restrain the movement of his opponents. Just as now, with the resounding call of a knight, they all quickly drew their swords, and the magical arrows shattered upon impact with their blades, yet, that was precisely what El was aiming for. While the knights were preoccupied with blocking the flying magical arrows, El seized the opportunity to unleash another spell, he levitated in mid-air along with a colossal hammer. The massive hammer swung towards the prince with a deafening roar from El, the prince, feeling suspicious for a moment, turned around and exclaimed in shock, A. Eh? Despite the astonishment, the colossal hammer still struck the prince directly. His body was bent into a shape resembling the letter C upon impact, anyone witnessing this scene would wonder, 
is his spine okay? Foam bubbled at the prince's mouth as he screamed in despair as if the whole world had just collapsed on him, the extreme agony engulfed him, and for someone who always found pleasure in the pain of others, this pain felt unfamiliar and terrifying. L chuckled as he watched the prince writhing in agony, knowing that there would likely be significant internal injuries from that blow, external wounds could be healed through magic, but internal injuries would take time to mend. When the prince's screams echoed, Duke Klein's gaze immediately turned to him, Klein anxiously called out to the prince struggling in pain, Your Highness. The duke groaned helplessly, wanting to save the prince, but realizing that being reckless would lead to his own demise, the Golden Knight possessed such formidable strength that even Duke Klein felt threatened, it felt like just one careless moment could lead to a disastrous outcome. Due to his eagerness to check on the prince's condition as soon as possible, Duke Klein exposed himself, leaving an opening, immediately, the Golden Knight seized the opportunity to intensify the attack. Just as the Golden Knight was preparing to deliver a decisive blow, he heard El's command, Tana, hold back, stand by in the other world. The Golden Knight responded to El's command with gleaming eyes, obeying without hesitation. In front of Klyon, a radiant golden light emanated from the body of the Golden Knight, while the other world stood waiting. However, Klyon refused to stand idly by as the Golden Knight disappeared, he yelled out, I won't let you go anywhere. Immediately after, Klyon swung his sword towards the Golden Knight, dozens of shimmering blades appearing above him, all aimed directly at the Golden Knight. The shimmering blades swiftly launched towards the disappearing Golden Knight. Aiming accurately at his left arm and left leg, unable to withstand the sharpness of the blades, the left arm of the Golden Knight was severed. Klyon smirked triumphantly as if he had achieved a great feat, that's right, just like that, he thought to himself. But Klyon's moment of joy was short-lived as the severed arm suddenly flew back up, attaching itself to the Golden Knight's shoulder as if nothing had happened. The Golden Knight waved the reattached arm nonchalantly, seemingly to taunt Klyon for celebrating prematurely. Klyon fell silent as he witnessed the scene, realizing the futility of trying to stop the Golden Knight. Then, the Golden Knight completely disappeared into the other side of the spatial rift. Duke Klyon burst into bitter laughter, feeling utterly defeated, ha ha, ha ha ha, thought I had it, didn't I, but in the blink of an eye. With no formidable opponent like the Golden Knight left, Duke Klyon's gaze shifted towards L, who was also looking at him. L nodded respectfully, acknowledging the prowess of the masterful knight, then, he took out a coin. With a flick of his hand, the coin was destroyed, and a blue light emanated from within, flowing into another place. Afterwards, he calmly looked at the fallen duke and said, I said I would destroy this, not that I wouldn't copy it. L shifted his gaze towards the prince, who was still lying contorted on the ground, everything you've done has been recorded in this spell book. L stated, his eyes cold as he simultaneously threatened him, if you continue to pursue us, I will spread these records. Then, L returned his gaze to Duke Klyon, nodding once again, sorry for the disturbance, he said calmly. A sparkling green light began to emanate around L as he sincerely addressed Klyon with utmost respect, expressing his hope that they would never meet again as enemies. Klyon's eyes widened as he looked at L, his eyes reflecting a clear sense of mutual respect. L then used instant teleportation magic, and in the blink of an eye, he and the others in his party were enveloped in a white void and vanished. After L's departure, Duke Klyon felt a twinge of disappointment, truly a genius, he murmured, I wish we had met under different circumstances. With a sigh, Klyon turned back to look at the battlefield behind him, feeling perplexed, anyway, how do I deal with this mess, he muttered to himself. Subsequently, the incident at the Duke's estate was hushed up, but news of the youngest level 7 mage possessing power equivalent to that of an archmage, and his golden knight, began to spread far and wide, it marked L's stunning debut on the continent. In the days following, 
El and his family settled into a new home secluded from the rest of the world. Early in the morning, El sat in contemplation, his fingers tapping lightly on the table, appearing serene. His golden hair swayed with each gentle movement of his head, exuding freshness and elegance, his handsome face and sharp jawline radiated masculine charm, El was lost in thought, reminiscing about the major turmoil he had caused in the Blyard Empire. Essentially, El had destroyed the Einhard estate, slapped high-ranking mages of that clan in the face. And severely injured the prince, if El were to return to Banzark, he would only bring trouble to others. Even if the Empire were to pursue El now and execute him on the spot, he wouldn't complain. But El held the spellbook containing their secrets, so they wouldn't be able to pursue and kill him. The battle had also taught El many valuable lessons. El felt a sense of satisfaction and self-assurance, realizing that the speed of his incantations and the precision of his spell combination surpassed anyone else's. El was confident that he could become even stronger by learning a few more supportive spells. The more he thought about it, the more proud he felt, the power of the Golden Knight was also quite remarkable. As seen in the evenly matched battle with Duke Klyon, a Grandmaster Swordsman. El felt elated, thinking that five years of diligent research had indeed paid off. He began to plan even grander schemes, if he could create more Golden Knights, perhaps he could even conquer continents, however, creating a Golden Knight took about three years, and the amount of money required to create them was immense. In reality, the most important thing El learned from that battle was the power of teamwork, there were things that couldn't be accomplished by individual strength alone. After hearing rumors about El, many countries hired people to search for him, and surely among them were those with ill intentions. This was something that made El reflect deeply, he needed to establish power for himself before they could get to him, but how? As El pondered his next move, Silfer knocked on his door. Unlike before, Silfer now seemed a bit hesitant whenever she came to see El, Ellie, can I come in, she asked. El, of course, didn't want her to feel that way and always tried to bridge the gap between them, yes, mom, come in, he replied gently. With El's approval, Silfer carefully opened the door and entered the room, following her were Serena and Kana, from their shy expressions, it was evident that after the incident, they found it difficult to face each other. Nevertheless, seeing his family members radiate beauty wherever they went, El felt his complex thoughts and worries quickly dissipate, he smiled and asked Silfer, what's up? Silfer seemed hesitant for a moment, struggling to find the right words, Ellie, my son, how long have you been this strong, she finally managed to say. At that moment, El felt a shift in Silfer's attitude towards him, he sighed softly and explained to her, I've been hiding this because no one would believe that I could achieve such a level at this age, and I know if the wrong people find out, it could put us all in danger, mom. El felt momentarily flustered, he couldn't reveal his past life to his mother, after a few awkward seconds, he smiled warmly and continued, but, mom, I'm still your one and only son, Ellie. Silfer's face softened as she heard her son's comforting words. She thought to herself, that's right, no matter how much he achieves, he's still Ellie. After some clear thinking, Silfer broke into a radiant smile, I'm sorry, even though I understand that you have your reasons, I didn't treat you the same as before, she admitted. El shook his head gently, indicating that Silfer's understanding was enough for him, he then lightened the mood with a gentle joke, Oh, actually, the reason I hid my skills is because if everyone knew I was a genius, I'd end up with a fan club, he teased. Silfer burst into laughter, Haha, you must stay humble, my dear, she said, as the tense atmosphere dissolved, El continued, Actually, there's something I want to tell everyone. All three women looked at El with curiosity, What's going on? they asked. El slowly explained, because of the events back then, we can't return to Banzark, he pointed to a map of the continent and continued, so, I've been thinking about what we should do, in the eastern part of the Serdian continent, there are five empires and many other magic towers. 
As L spoke, his excitement became evident, to the West, the continent is divided into hundreds of countries, besides a few powerful nations, there are still many places without magic towers, so, I've decided that I want to build a magic tower in a country that doesn't have one yet. L responded to Kana's surprise and curiosity, yes, a magic tower. That's where we'll go to meet Tower Lord Brian, only magic users of level 7 or higher can build a tower, the power of a magic tower can kill tens of thousands of soldiers in case of war, so countries often willingly allocate a huge amount of resources to support the magic towers. Kana's eyes widened in amazement at L's explanation, Serena continued to inquire, so, where do you plan to build this magic tower? L pointed to the map, indicating, here, in the kingdom of Tolian, located at the western edge of the continent. It has a vast and fertile territory, a dense population, and military strength stronger than neighboring countries. It's a powerhouse, but they don't have a magic tower, plus, nearby, there are territories of monsters, even a rare dragon, so every year, they suffer a lot of damage, especially from the Manticore Valley. L continued confidently with his plan, if we propose to help conquer this place, the kingdom of Tolian will surely agree, the king there is a good man, and the nobles under him trust him, it's just that the princes seem to have conflicts with each other, but the king can't do much about it. Silfer, still not entirely convinced, asked, is that all? L nodded and explained further, well, that's not necessarily a bad thing, it means there might be opportunities for us to step in and make a difference, especially if we can help bring peace and stability to the region. L shook his head, no problem, there are a few sorcerers interested in power, but the Tower of Magic usually doesn't get involved in politics. He decisively planned the development strategy of his Tower of Magic, so the issue we need to focus on is the monsters in the Manticore Valley and the Orc Forest. L confidently assessed, I'm sure the kingdom's military strength can easily handle the matter with the Orc Forest. But if they deploy all their military force there, they won't be able to confront the monsters of the Manticore Valley, if you can handle the situation in the valley to help them, the influence of both the Tower of Magic and the kingdom will increase. Listening to L's words, the three women pondered deeply, their future was closely tied to this matter, so they had to think as carefully as possible. Then Kana cautiously spoke up, her question not about the Tower of Magic but about herself, where can I find someone to guide me in mastering the art of combat? L understood what she wanted to say, he immediately replied, Ah, right, since I'm not a swordsman, I can only teach you the technique of gathering chi and cultivating fields, so, I also thought it would be best to find a swordsman who can teach you. L's response seemed as if he had thought through everything beforehand, surely, there must be someone suitable in the kingdom of Tolian, besides, their military power is also very strong, so we can search together, Kana said brightly upon hearing this. Next, it was Serena's turn, she looked at L with eyes full of burning desire and said, please continue to teach me as well. Serena, feeling conflicted, expressed, We truly feel so weak witnessing what happened last time, I thought at least I could protect myself to some extent. But seeing how strong you are, and those who fought with you back then, I realized I couldn't. Serena and Kana held hands tightly, their determination evident, they both spoke to L with resolute determination, We want to become stronger. In that moment, L was slightly surprised to see the desire and determination of the two girls, he smiled warmly in response to Serena, saying, of course, I will teach you. Seeing the strong will and determination of the two young girls, Silfer also didn't want to fall behind. She looked at L with a determined gaze and said, me too, I want to become stronger, just like my mother. L couldn't help but laugh at this adorable scene, all right, Let's all put our best efforts into this, he said with a bright smile. He then eagerly asked for the opinions of the family members once again, so, now, is everyone on board with the plan? When he received unanimous nods from the three women, L cheered excitedly, let's hit the road then, 
to the kingdom of Tolian. At the kingdom of Tolian, one of the most powerful kingdoms in the western continent, all the surrounding countries had less than half the strength of Tolian, making it almost the undisputed leader of the western continent, however, Tolian never claimed such a title. That's because it bordered the western region of the Land of Monsters, one of the three major deadly locations on the Serdia continent, during winter, when food supplies ran low, over 100,000 orcs and 10,000 trolls flooded in like a torrent. To stop this, Tolian had to mobilize a massive army every year to fend off the monster horde, if they arrogantly declared themselves the strongest. Their army would face even greater risks from the forces of other nations. Today was one of those days when the monsters went out hunting, unfortunately, King Redolf's army had to pass through here, the knights, upon sensing the stillness in the forest, immediately raised their swords in vigilance, my liege, please be careful, one of them warned, the number of monsters seems to have increased to an unprecedented level. Redolf couldn't hide his troubled heart, sighing heavily, at this rate, the people of the kingdom will be in danger, isn't there any hero to come and save us? Meanwhile, in the shadows of the trees, the figures of the lurking monsters were gradually becoming visible, they eagerly watched the people below with hungry, thirsty eyes.